And so to continue the angering review of the four games of the apocalypse, here I will talk about some parts of the HUD and simpler functionalities of the game, where I am entering a, into a more positive realm of reviewing, except for Cyberpunk of course, even though it's my favorite game, it still does have way too many problems. So let's give a few points to the amazing features of these four wonderful games. Now shops within Cyberpunk are a complete disappointment. The prices follow your level, so everything becomes insanely expensive as you level up. And you can have cybernetics or rare guns costing half a million euro dollars. You'll have shops for general weapons, melee weapons, cars, food that is pretty much poisonous, to, pointless to buy, drugs that are pointless to buy, shop for hacks that is completely pointless also since you will get all of them from looting enemies a million times over and you'll pretty much end up selling all of them. There are junk shops that have almost zero things you need except for a few rare permanent consumable buffs and cosmetic shops for apparel that hurts me for even existing so I will give zero points for this sadness since it's pretty much standard across all of the games. And shops in Red Dead Redemption 2 are something else. While you have normal sh weapon shops and general store, you have medical office, you have butcher shops, and you have clothing shops, horse tables and so on. The main difference between this game and other is that actually it actually feels like shopping you have the catalog that you can peruse with all of the stats and information of the item you want to buy written here then if you buy weapon you can upgrade it right on the spot and engrave it and change its appearance well you can do that also later clothing you do try on in front of the mirror horses you can actually see in front of you and can maintain them in the stables and so on the main point also is that you can, for general stores for example, also buy stuff by perusing through the shelves and picking up the item, inspecting it, or just buying it while taking it to the satchel, as you would everything else. And again, it actually feels so much more natural than most other games, so I will give plus one points here. And now shops here are just insane in quantity. Most shops will use in-game currency and few premium one, but again the sheer amount of them is just insane. From normal shop in your ship where you buy stuff uh, for credits and platinum to more than half of the shops in the game where you buy stuff with reputation to shops of different factions where beside reputation buying you also buy stuff with rare materials and everything needs to be leveled up in re with reputation, the factions and such, for you to be able to access all of the goods. You have dojo shops of course, temporary shops like battle, uh, event shops that hold special goods for special temporary currency. The amount is absolutely insane, but I will put zero points here since everything is meticulously made to be an insane time sink to get everything and all, but it again, it, it somehow actually works. So shops in Witcher are more similar to Red Dead Redemption 2 than with other games. If only that you have the incentive to go to them, there is a meaning for you to use them not only for selling junk stuff. You have normal varieties of course, armor for armor, weapons for weapon, uh, general trader for random stuff, herbalist for plants and materials for potions, quartermaster for lighter armor, book merchant, innkeeper for food and alcohol consumables, alchemist for rune stones and crafting material, and so on. The whole point is that you will generally want to go to a specialized merchant to fix your gear so you don't waste too much of the repair kits in the field. They are also used for crafting armor, weapons and alchemical stuff. They can dismantle your useless junk, that is stuff that you do not need and can be dismantled for resources for crafting. So there truly is a point for merchants outside of simple trading and with most of them you can actually play Gwent, which is even bigger incentive to search them all, at least 
to check their stocks if for nothing else and of course if you are crafting something in any shop if they have the uh, materials that you are lacking you can buy it directly from the crafting menu not needing to switch constantly between tabs to look buy and then go back so i will give this plus one points and currency in cyberpunk is euro dollars and that is about it it drops from everywhere at the end you will have millions without really need any need to spend any of it so for this sadness again i will give zero points currency here in red dead redemption are normal us dollars and amazingly it's actually consistent prices in stores will stay the same throughout the game despite you in the end having massive amounts of money the only difference in prices you will have is based on your honor level which is understandable also the amount of money where technically is infinite and you can farm it you know, or earn it forever after you gather all of the collectible gold bars and hidden chests and valuables and do all of the quests that's pretty much it after that you can only sell stuff to earn money which takes a lot of time and loot enemies which takes even more time so i will give this zero points because it is normal it doesn't stand out too much from other games so yeah and currencies in warframe are plentiful also same as shops the most basic one will be credits that you will generally use the most and it will be for more basic stuff which you all will have to craft with additional resources that you will need to farm then you will have ducats that you Stay get shot. by selling prime components in ducat kiosks and you can only use them for trading with battle and rarely for crafting they added aya that can be used to trade with varzia for skins, scenes or relics mostly and some weapons occasionally but nothing special really also a lot of loot like from fishing, mining, hunting and such would be used as currency at different factions but the most important one would be the platinum which is the premium currency that you buy with money or are awarded by developers at official events or streams but mainly by buying them now the cherry on top one of the best qualities and the main reason why this game is as popular as it is that you can actually trade platinum with other players almost no other game employs the same tactic but you can tr trade the prime currency with no limitations you can buy 1000 platinum and just give it all away if you wanted to do so but it's generally used for buying stuff from other players since as i al already said everything is based on a percentage drop so you will either need to put Very insane well. amount of time farming one thing or just buy it of another player that has already sunk in that time and need platinum for other things and by earning platinum by just playing from other players you can actually use that platinum to buy other things from the premium shop also so technically you can play the game completely for free without ever spending a single dime in it and still get everything that game has to offer well the amount of time you'd need to put into that is insane uh, it's still not unfeasible like for example Diablo 4 and it's 100,000 years to earn everything by just playing so I will give this plus two points since the platinum trading is one of the breakthrough mechanics that made this game into what it is today and currencies in Witcher 3 is crowns that is the main currency that you will be using for everything that requires money with the addition of orens and florens that are not used for trading but can be brought to Vivaldi at his bank where he will exchange them for crowns so it is advisable to visit him from time to time after extensive looting so pretty much zero points here and now inventory within cyberpunk i mean it's fine i guess far from the best but at least it's not bethesda like mess of infinite scrolling everything is more or less visible from equipment menu to cyberworld menu to inventory menu where everything is shown clearly and you do not need to spend ages looking for stuff although there is 
quite a lot of scrolling depending on how much stuff you have within the inventory so I will give zero points here for again the standard across the games and boy the inventory within Red Dead Redemption 2 I mean I've finally managed to hit a negative in this game which definitely would be this the inventory is simply atrocious. There is no simplicity behind it. You have to scroll through mostly everything. And if something is in a collection, you have to scroll to that, then open it and scroll again. And it's just a nightmare to look for anything inside your satchel. And to be honest, anywhere else that has inventory. And it's not as bad as within Bethesda games, but it's a massive negative, so I will give minus one points here, since it's obviously made for consoles, and they just left it like that for PC, which I find to be very and beyond stupid. And not so amazingly, the inventory within Warframe is the best out of these four games. All of the different inventories in the game are easily navigated, everything is presented well, compacted properly, noted and named properly. There is a search bar that works well if you search for mods and you don't know the name. And for example, it gives a fire damage, you can just type in fire in the search bar and it will give you all the mods that have anything correlating to fire. Same goes for frames, for weapons and basically everything else. And it's quite rare to see games these days that have a proper inventory, sadly of course. So I will give this plus one points for something that should be standard, but unfortunately it is not. Now inventory in Witcher is okay, amazingly, and unfortunately it's not as good as in Warframe, but it does function, you can navigate through it properly, everything is decently visible, everything stacks properly, the only hitch would be if you have a lot of stuff, which would be the case later down the, in the game, you do have to scroll a lot through all of the tabs, and that is the main detriment to inventory inside Witcher games, so zero points here and controls in cyberpunk are also okay nothing out of the ordinary you can thankfully change most of if not all the movement abilities and uh, ui things unlike with elden ring for example where you cannot change almost anything because it's one of the laziest portings to pc ever done so zero points since everything works as it should with nothing really too bad or too good and controls here in Red Dead redemption are okay you are able to change mostly anything in the game from movement to inventory to menu navigation to camera and photo mode so nothing that would be standing above other games or being below them so zero points so controls in warframe are also the best quality here you can pretty much change every single aspect of the game management with them general are for most of the stuff railjacks are for the the battleship, Lunaro is PvP battles, placement is for decorations, Frame Fighter is the mini game that you buy from Cephalon that most people will miss, and Shazin is the thing that will be generally missed also, and it's a guitar or harp or some kind of instrument where you can play your own music in a similar way by how you can create your own music for Octavia. And Drifter is also generally for Duviris, that is where you will play him mostly, but it comes for Operator also. So all in all, controls here are much more in-depth than other three, so I will give plus one point for this also. And controls in Witcher are also simplistic and proper. You can change all of the things that would matter in the game for movement, camera and hood controlling. You can even unlock the menu hotkeys and special actions that would not be changed normally and rearrange them however you see fit, so I will give this zero points since it's pretty much standard. And last for last, the map. Cyberpunk map is quite underwhelming. It shows properly all of the uh, locations explored and unexplored. It has 2.5D map that you have no control over. 
it can be a little bit confusing from time to time if something that you're looking for is elevated or underground since it's not a fully 3d map but it would have been actually awesome if they had the map that you could explore like google maps for example that is the parts that you've already traveled to and that you could enter the buildings from the map just as a remote exploration addition but of course there is none of that because why would there be really just a plain ass map with no uniqueness and zero points to that and map within Red Dead Redemption 2 is topographic actually which is an interesting touch but outside of it it's pretty much standard in every aspect and controlling the map and legends in it is normal it shows you everything that it has or that you would need so zero points here i mean plain 2d map with everything that should be there maps in warframe are quite standard they also follow the diablo slash path of exile type like maps where it's transparent it unlocks as you explore it and once you finish the mission it's forgotten and you have to rediscover it all over again which differs from open world maps where it's always uncovered and you can also if you hold the map button open the hard map that does not move around with you or is transparent and you can actually navigate it much more easily but all in all it's just standard so zero points and map here in Witcher is also topographic, same as in Red Dead Redemption 2, but it's also colored and animated. All of the points of interest are much better visible than in other three games, and everything unlocks easily and stays there even after clearing those points. Changing between maps is seamless and everything is properly labeled, navigation is also easy and user-friendly, so I will give here plus one point because out of all three is the best and for most game in general is probably one of the most proper maps out there like share subscribe do not hate on the messenger and of course never ever talk about fight club